I would like to share one idea um, about uh, managing water scarcity for food security, focusing on uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. The world's population has been increasing continuously, and this uh, has been translated into more mouths for food. And uh, agriculture and food production needs a lot of water. Actually, right now, just for irrigation itself, it uses about 70% uh, of uh, the withdrawn water resources. And uh, as a consequence, many rivers and lakes are drying up. So we are facing <coughs> great challenge to produce more food with uh, limited water resources. Then the question is where we should focus on to produce more food with per drop of water. Food production is not just for local consumption, it is also for international trade. At the moment, the international traded food accounts for about 15% of the total production. And international trade carries virtual water, which is uh, the water used for production, during the production. Uh, America, North America and South America and uh, uh, Oceania are the major food exporters and also the virtual water exporters. And Asia and Africa are the major importers of food, also the uh, importers of virtual water. In this map uh, of water scarcity, as you can see, actually the major water scarce regions are in the middle uh, latitude of the northern uh, hemisphere. And in sub-Saharan Africa, there isn't uh, physical water scarcity. However, in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, yield, crop yield is very low, typically one-third of the global average. And why it is that? We did a lot of studies on the factors influencing the uh, yield growth in sub-Saharan Africa. And crop models are widely used uh, for this kind of investigation. And uh, coupling it with the GIS, we can do a large scale uh, simulation and find out what factors are important for crop growth. This slide actually shows one of our research result, which is uh, simulated a, a result for maize yield in sub-Saharan Africa. The total height shows uh, the range of the yield. The red line shows the average yield of maize at this moment for the whole continent. And then the second bar actually shows uh, if we increase uh, the water supply to meet the demand for, uh, by the crops, what will happen? It shows actually it doesn't have much impact on yield because yield doesn't increase much. The third bar actually shows uh, when we increase the fertilize, fertilizer supply to meet uh, the demand of crops, and then you can see the yield jumps uh, by a big margin, but uh, the range is still very large because uh, this means uh, the, the range or the yield is unstable. And the last one, actually, last bar actually shows uh, that uh, the yield is stable with water supply and the sufficient fertilization. And here we want to show the technology and, uh, and uh, know-how actually there. We know how to improve the yield. For Sub-Saharan Africa, if we can uh, double the yield, then the Sub-Saharan Africa would not need to import cereal anymore. If we can triple the yield, then there will be surplus for export. So with many regions in the world having water scarcity and the increasing production becomes more uh, costly, and Sub-Saharan Africa is a new source for the future food supply and virtual water supply to alleviate water scarcity in other regions. So a Chinese entrepreneur once has said, uh, give me an Africa and I can feed the world. He's wrong, he cannot have Africa, but he's right in the way that Africa does have the big potential to provide food to the world. And the challenge is how to unleash this uh, uh, potential in a sustainable, and uh, 
equitable and economically way.